The mood at Arsenal is lifting and they smashed 5 past Crystal Palace. But with fans still wondering about the transfer window, today we'll get an important update on Arsenal's late transfer plans. We'll also reveal the breaking news about Karim Benzema, get the latest on the return of Urien Timber, and break down the impressive Arsenal numbers that you need to know about. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14, welcome back to your boys channel and I hope you guys are doing sensational, especially after Arsenal got their first one in a while. There seems to be a sense of calm around the Emirates now, but the transfer winner may be about to get interesting, so don't forget to smash a like on the video if you do enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Less than 12,000 away from 200k, if you can get your boy there, I would massively appreciate it. But starting off with Arsenal's important returns. Arsenal's summer signing Urien Timba had so much hope going into the season, especially after a standout performance against Man City in the Community Shield. But hearts were broken in the first Premier League game of the season, as Urien Timba went down holding his knee, sobbed off in the second half against Longham Forest. Things are about to get exciting, my friends. As Sammy Mockbell confirms, there is optimism that long term absentee Urien Timba can return to full training next month, with Timba making excellent progress and could return to the main group for training at London Colony by the end of February, provided there aren't any late setbacks. Now, in terms of Mikel Arteta, he's got a different story. When asked if Timber could return back this season, Mikel said it's a possibility, but at the moment, he is still very far from competing. Are we hopeful that he can make a realistic impact before the end of the season? At the moment, it looks like that. I wouldn't take that Mikel quote too seriously. This guy's got a known history of being a bit of a liar when it comes to injuries, which may be down to him trying to hide it from other teams. There's a reason for Arsenal fans to be excited though. Not only is he a Swiss army knife, able to play centre-back, right-back and left-back, but in those games against top wide forwards where Arsenal struggle was Inchenko, Yuri and Timber will be the guy to help stop that, which is perfectly summed up in his performance in the community shield against Man City. A 7.0 rating with two clearances, one block shot, two interceptions and one tackle. There are some reports claiming that Timber could return as soon as Arsenal's Champions League game against Porto in February. But what's happening with a certain Declan Rice? Taken off against Crystal Palace reportedly with a hamstring injury, Mikel Arteta confirmed after the game that it wasn't as serious. And now Sami Mokbel confirms. Declan Rice is expected to be available for Arsenal's next match against Nottingham Forest. This guy is honestly a machine. Rice continues an insane injury record of only having one injury since 2019. When you look at Mikel Arteta trying to find his version of Rodri, that's where Declan Rice comes into play. An iron man in terms of fitness. The midfield could be about to get even better, as a certain Thomas Partey nears a return. With Amy Lawrence of The Athletic confirming, Thomas Partey might be making an appearance sometime soon. Forrest is around the corner and that's where reports can Partey could return. I don't expect him to start straight away, but once fully fit, there will be a massive dilemma. Does Thomas Partey go straight in as a number six, allowing Declan Rice to play further forward? When you think about the fact that Arsenal have played Man City twice this season and won both, it's not a coincidence that Partey and Rice both played in those games. The fact that you also have gone over knocked out the African Cup of Nations, as soon as Partey's past fit, he won't have to go on international duties. Talking of midfielders though, I want to focus on Jorginho, a £12 million signing this time last year. Reports in Turkey claim that Besiktas have made first contact to San Jorginho after being recommended to the club by the players' entourage. Besiktas would see the move as a positive. From his time in Napoli to even Chelsea, Jorginho is used to starting games. At Arsenal, his role is different. Far more of a squad player and he's definitely useful. We're closing into the point where Jorginho may feel that he's too good to be on the bench. I wonder if Mikel Arteta has a different idea. Especially with the Champions League coming up, the experience with J20 may be very useful. A departure feels inevitable though and that's why Arsenal are planning for the future, targeting Real Sociedad's Martin Zubamendi. With reports in Spain claiming, the Sociedad midfielder has picked Arsenal and has bid farewell to the La Liga side. Arsenal have been long term admired as Zubamendi. Dating back to this time last year, David Ontin has already confirmed that Arsenal tried to make an offer. But being San Sebastian born and bred, Zubamendi's always found it hard to leave his home club. Arsenal are not giving up though because the profile makes sense. Able to play as a number 6 and a left number 8, so Mendy has won possession more times in the midfield third than any other player since the start of the 2022-23 La Liga season. According to Kai Kayanek though, Real Sociedad will be open to selling Zubamendi who has a £53 million release clause, with Arsenal having a good relationship with the Spanish team, but a deal this month is unlikely to happen, with Zubamendi keen to stay for now. Arsenal will have their options open though, and focusing in the Premier League there may be a player at Aston Villa. According to Peter Rowe, Arsenal are still pushing hard for Douglas Luiz behind the scenes and have had numerous bids for his services rejected in recent windows. Nine goal contributions this season, Luiz remains on fire for Aston Villa, with Emery's team fighting for a place in Europe. There's no chance to let him go in January, but a summer window is going to be so interesting. From Zubamendi to Luiz, Arsenal will have a lot of targets. There have been some fans wondering though, should Arsenal be aiming higher, maybe targeting a certain Frankie de Jong, who's part of the Barcelona side that's really struggling in La Liga. You can't forget about the attacking midfielders though, so let's go to the Bundesliga. According to HITC Sports, 
Arsenal scouts were in attendance for Bayer Leverkusen's last gasp win away at RB Leipzig. Watching a quartet of players with Xavi Simons, Luis Appender, Jeremy Frimpon and Ezekiel Palacios all on the club's radar. The name of Xavi Simons is very intriguing. A player that Arsenal have targeted in the past during his time at PSV but went to sign back to PSG who had a buyback clause who loaned him straight out to RB Leipzig. Reports in Germany now claim Arsenal are in the picture to sign the PSG young Xavi Simons in the summer if his loan deal at RB Leipzig is not extended. When Leipzig looking to extend his loan to 2025, top clubs have interests like Arsenal and it's making it an interesting race. Arsenal have many profiles in midfield but one we lack is someone a bit like Phil Foden. A maverick in midfield able to collect the ball, turn and drive. Simons ticks the boxes straight away. 5 goals and 7 assists in the Bundesliga this season. This recent performance against Frankfurt sums him up as a player. Despite getting no goals and assists, Simons got an 8.7 rating making 88 touches, 35 accurate passes, 4 key passes, 1 big chance created, alongside a whopping 8 out of 11 dribbles and 16 out of 21 ground duels. Simons would offer Arsenal a versatile attacking midfielder but the concern is, what happens with Emil Smith-Rowe? Fabrizio Romano confirmed early in the week, West Ham have approached Arsenal to discuss a loan deal for Emil Smith-Rowe, with talks taking place to understand if there was a way to structure a deal between the two clubs, but Arsenal were not interested. Fabrizio then confirmed that Arsenal rejected West Ham's initial loan approach as they have no intention to let ESR leave on loan and he's still considered a key player for Mikel Arteta's squad. His cameo off the bench against Palace was interesting. Playing in the left half space in the role of Kai Havertz, this moment here was very key. Odegaard on the ball finding Smith Rowe in between the lines. Notice how smooth he is with the ball to turn first time, driving to find an in-space Martinelli. If Smith Rowe is going to make it Arsenal, this needs to be the time. With staying fit a massive part, alongside Mikel Arteta trusting him. Moving on to Arsenal's late transfer moves. Mikel Arteta made a surprise move going into the season, replacing Aaron Ramsdale with David Raya. Signed on a loan deal that was not a permanent, Fabrizio Romano confirms the Raya deal was going to be permanent at the beginning, but he had to change the structure of the deal because of FFP. The deal will now be made permanent and it will be soon. From what he's heard, it's already agreed, so I don't know when, but they will soon make it official. With 6 clean sheets this season, his last performance was definitely one of his best. A 7.6 rated alongside 5 saves and a 0.62 goals prevented. Raya completed 20 accurate passes alongside 2 accurate long balls. There's still many Arsenal fans that are a bit confused. With Ramsdor having a fine season last year, named the PFA goalkeeper this season, what makes Raya Mikel Arteta's new number 1? The answer for me is in the game against Crystal Palace. Focus on this example here of Raya on the ball. Despite being a goalkeeper, notice how wide he is of his goal, playing almost as a left centre back in the build up phase. Then compare that to Aaron Ramsdale to last season. Against the same team in Crystal Palace in a similar scenario, Ramsdale remains in the centre of his goal, forcing our other centre back to drop, which then allows Crystal Palace to press. Raya is Mikel Arteta's extra man in the build up phase, always playing with his foot on top of the ball. This is Mikel Arteta learning from Roberto De Zerbi's Brighton, the idea of baiting the opposition team into a press, to open a space from behind that Arsenal could then exploit. Arsenal also have a bit of a left back dilemma. Lonely Nuno Tavares is struggling in Nottingham Forest, making only two starts this season. Fabrizio Romano now confirms that Olympic Marseille are trying to sign Nuno Tavares as a new left back, with Arsenal 100% open to selling Nuno to Marseille on a permanent transfer, but the deal depends on Nottingham Forest, as they insist they want to keep Nuno until June and there is no release clause. The Forest are making a very important move, as Fabrizio confirms they are in advance talks to sign Carlos Borges from Ajax on a loan deal. Premier League rule states that teams are only allowed a maximum of four loans, and Forrest have already used all the spaces up, this may be an indication that they're open to letting Tavares leave. But also themselves are also still in the market, and as Fabrizio Romano confirms, Arsenal will be looking at fullbacks in the markets, because they want to do something in that position. I think it's going to be about opportunities in the final days. That's why we need to go to Southampton in the Championship. According to Team Talk, sources have stated Southampton's Kyle Walker Peters is a name for Arsenal fans to keep an eye on over the next week ahead of next Thursday's deadline. 26 years of age in the peak of his powers. His recent performance against Sheffield Wednesday was standout. An 8.3 rating alongside 3 interceptions and 2 tackles. 8 out of 13 ground duels. 61 accurate passes, 2 key passes. The thing I want to focus on though is versatility. Despite being mainly a right footed right back, Walker Peters' his heat map in the Premier League last season shows. He also played quite a few games at left back. But what's happening in terms of Arsenal and their strikers? Well, according to reports in Germany, there could be a very intriguing opportunity. As Sky Sports Germany confirmed, Arsenal target Benjamin Sesko has a release clause in his contract. That will be valid in the summer and it's worth 50 million euros. Despite signing for Leipzig only in the summer, this had to happen. And knowing his future may be elsewhere, the player's agent has negotiated a very important release clause. In a striker market that is going crazy with players so expensive, Sesko is only 20 years of age and has got so much potential. Elite ball striking and size, standing a whopping 6 foot 5. He's drawn comparison to a certain Zlatan Ibrahimovic, but making only 5 starts for Leipzig this season. Arsenal fans will be asking the question of do we need another project? 
Look at Man United and their signing of Rasmus Hoyland. The potential is clear to be seen, but if Arsenal are trying to get over the line against a super team like Man City, Mikel Arteta may want some already made player. But is that going to be a certain Karim Benzema? Unhappy in Saudi Arabia and trying to force a move away, Sami Mokbo confirms that Arsenal were offered Karim Benzema early this month. But instead of focusing on moving for a more versatile defender ahead of next week's deadline, it seems like the Gunners have said no. With even Fabrizio Romano saying, there's nothing going on between Karim Benzema and Arsenal, with the Athletic then confirming that Leon of a team that are trying to explore return for Karim Benzema, there will be quite a few angry Arsenal fans and I can understand why. Benzema is a player that has proven to be in world class, experience in the Champions League that could have been so useful, but Arsenal are sticking to their guns. A strategy that has taken them from 8th place to fighting for a title. Edu and Arteta seem to be against a short term signing that would not only break Arsenal's wage structure, but has no guarantee of succeeding. Instead, Arsenal have long term targets and one is back in business. After 8 months out with the ban, Ivan Tony returned to Brentford with a bang, scoring a goal with a 7.9 rating. With two key passes, one big chance created, five out of five ground duels, and two out of seven in the air. This was a Harry Kane esque performance. Time and time again, Tony was dropping deeper, firing elite balls in behind to help Brentford counter. When you go back to the last season and Tony's creative numbers, four assists alongside 12 big chances created. When you think about Harry Kane at Tottenham alongside Hyung Min Son, imagine Ivan Tony's passing ability alongside a certain Gabriel Martinelli. There's also been an intriguing move regarding Victor Ossiman, who confirms to CBS Sport Golasso. I've already made my decision on the next step I want to do at the end of the season. I have made my mind up and I already have my plan. Speculation is now building who is that club going to be, with Ossiman also stating he's a massive fan of the Premier League. Arsenal and Chelsea seem to be the main two teams. The key part though is going to be Mikel Arteta. He only wants players that want to only play for Arsenal. If we get to a stage that Ossiman is unsure about Arsenal, Mikel Arteta won't be scared to move on. Moving on to the other Arsenal news today. Arsenal's young forward Mika Birovic had a very intriguing season making 14 appearances in Motherwell in the Scottish Premiership, where he's been on fire scoring 6 goals and 5 assists. Arsenal have now intervened, taking BRF out of Motherwell. As Art de Roche confirms now, BRF is now heading to SK Sturmgrass on loan for the rest of the season, with it viewed as a good opportunity for the next stage of his development and a chance to challenge for silverware in the Austrian Bundesliga. Some Arsenal fans have definitely been surprised, but it seems like Arsenal are trying to be proactive, because they realise if the player thrives in Europe, there may be more interest going into the future. Look at a club like Chelsea and how they use their loan system to maximise the player's value. Academy sales are fantastic for FFP. It might be time for Arsenal to take note. Stat time of the day, let's talk Mikel Arteta substitutes. As confirmed here, Arsenal have now had 16 goals and assists via subs in the Premier League this season. That is more than any other side, with the likes of Nketiah getting another assist off the bench against Palace. As Mikel Arteta said after that game, we don't have a 30-40 to 40 goal scorer so we have to share them. And that's what Arsenal are doing, look at these stats here. Saka has 9 goals and 11 assists. Jesus 7 and 4. Martinelli now has 6 goals and 4 assists. Odegaard has 7 and 3. Havertz is 5 and 1. And Trossard also has 7 goals and 2 assists. Not forgetting Eddie Nketi, who is also second highest goal contributor, I want to focus on a very important stat, which shows the open play XG since the 23rd of November. Arsenal have created 16, the highest in the league, with Odegaard dropping deeper and also becoming more balanced. Arteta's team has started to generate. And as he said before the Palace game, we must continue to be who we are. A defeat cannot make you lose sight of who you are. If you do that, then you were never who you said you were in the first place. The underlying numbers are massively now in Arsenal's favour. Reaching the stage of the year that the XG for and against is so far apart, the underlying numbers are not far from the peak of last season. The most important stats of course are on paper but you can't forget about sustainability. And we think about Pep Guardiola's Man City, a team always on top of those stats. There's a reason why they won 5 out of 6 league titles. In terms of this year's title race, Arsenal remain 3rd. Level 1 points with City but now 5 points behind Liverpool, who move clear once again after smashing 4 past Bournemouth away from home, with the XG definitely being surprising. Bournemouth's 1.41 to Liverpool's 1.75. Liverpool have something that maybe Arsenal don't, lethal game breakers like Diego Jota. If Arsenal are going to find a way to get back into the title race, the question is who's going to step up for us. That is the video there and there though, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to smash a like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're trying to reach 200k. Don't forget to follow your boy on all of his social medias as well. The links are down below in the description. But that was the latest episode of the Transfers FC. The window has not been exciting, but as we enter the final weeks, things could definitely get interesting. So stay tuned as always, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.